Well, good day to you, my friends. Welcome back to 15 Minute Free Thinking with Carpo. Boy, I've got an interesting topic today. But then, when I really think about it, I realize that it's most likely interesting to me. Whereas, maybe not so much to you or others. Whereas, sometimes I will talk about an obscure subject that I'm not that interested in, and somebody will say that is something that completely moves them. And really, this is the basis for being a human, to realize that everybody has different interests. Everybody has different passions, different desires, and often those change. I'd like to start off here by investigating a word, metanoia which most likely will be somewhere in the title. Metanoia is a derived from a Greek term and it basically means to change one's mind. Meta meaning mind. You may have heard of metaphysics. Well, metanoia, and yes, it does sound similar to paranoia because it has the same roots. Both of these words are very misunderstood. But metanoia is much less heard. And I'm guessing a few of you have probably never even heard that term before. But I'm guessing you have heard the term repent. Now, the term repent is usually used inappropriately. In fact, when the word repent was translated from the Bible, uh, the original word really should have been and was metanoia. Because the idea of repentance has nothing to do at all with atoning for your sins or feeling guilt or following someone else. It is literally to change your mind about something, which may seem rather simple. But we know that humans dig our heels in deep. When we believe something or we want to believe something, we tend to dig in very deep. But when we do change our mind, oh boy, watch out. We want to tell everybody about it. I suppose to give you an example, there politically in our society right now, everything is charged, partially because of the media, partially because of bad politics, and partially because we as humans don't really know what we want or how to do adequate research anymore. But Let's take the intellectual dark web, or the IDW as it was deemed at one point, to make a point. Many people flocked to a group of intellectuals who had changed their minds about certain things, politically, and many people will call them, let's say, red pillars, people who once were left and then they realized the left was something that they didn't want to be part of, so they moved to the right. However, many of the people who are the, quote, intellectuals or the philosophers tend to have been in the middle the whole time. Just like I find myself in the middle. It's very difficult to change your mind if you don't have preconceived notions about what is true already. In other words, the more you let go of what you think is true, the lonelier you become because you can't come together on certain beliefs. If one person in a church has a slightly different take on a passage in the Bible, they might be ridiculed or ignored, but they could even be excommunicated from certain factions for even daring to believe that something might be different than what we think it is. We are so afraid of being wrong that changing our mind is a revolutionary act in today's world. I suppose talking about the dark web, as they called it, the IDW, to get that point across here, I don't agree or disagree with any individual 100%. Just like I never considered that group of people to be a group of people. It was the internet and society that made it appear this way. But this is a very important take because a lot of people will flock to anyone who wants to tell them. The truth, as would be expected. 
But finding the truth in today's world is so tied up with people's ad revenue or reactionary politics. I think of it as what info is used, for example. When people are making a claim about something being true and trying to convince someone to change their mind about what they already think about something, they will use whatever statistics they can. Usually it's confirmation bias. It's the same thing that happens with scientists when they are hired to find a particular answer for a company, let's say. They will throw out 10 experiments that fail and keep the one that worked and they'll use that as their basis. And because of this, we've lost trust in others. Therefore, it's difficult for us to change our minds about things. Garbage in, garbage out. I think the biggest issue I have with a lot of mind changing out there and what we consider, especially politically, and believe I'm not gonna lean on this the entire time, but it was a topic I was going to discuss last week specifically about this IDW, which, by the way, includes people like Brett Weinstein, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson. Um, Brett Weinstein is a very intelligent evolutionary biologist who has podcast, the Dark Horse podcast, on YouTube. And he's a perfect example because he's just trying to cover the topics. But since he was pushed and edited and censored by YouTube and elsewhere, and because of the college where he worked, he lashes out because he's frustrated with that side of society. And this is important. When we are pushed down by a group of people, whoever it might be, or when we feel like we're wronged, we tend to generalize a huge portion of people who are similar. It's kind of like if somebody had been treated horribly by a Christian blaming the entire of Christianity for it. There are plenty of great Christian people out there who would never harm anyone. And there are others who would, who would pull out their sword in order to defend just their beliefs, not even their life. But whatever you stand for, whatever you think is true, it's more important to stand by what you think is real than be anti other things. For example, the IDW tends to be more anti-liberal than rather having any shared particular beliefs. And this was a very important point. Being anti this or anti that seems to be what gets the most attention. But that's not going to get anyone to change their mind. To make sure that I covered Jordan Peterson while I'm talking about this group of people since I mentioned him. I think he has many great points to share. He talks about fixing yourself, not society. He has this term of making your own bed. But the problem is uh, blindly promoting free market capitalism and misunderstanding books like 1984, assuming that the guy who is held down is not the guy who's actually held down and uh, in other words, not understanding basic concepts in the beginning can leave us scrambling to try to make sense of other aspects of life. If you don't have a round grasp on all the different aspects and you've only learned one side of life, that's all you really have to go on, which is why it's so important to listen to other points of view. And uh, I'd say Jordan Peterson did a pretty good job, and there was one interview that came to mind by Kathy Newman on Channel 4. I believe it was yeah, in Europe somewhere over there, England, I think. But she, it's a pretty popular news place. She interviewed him and basically put words in his mouth the whole time. And it's kind of gone down as this epic example of an attempted takedown of somebody who is well-spoken and stands by what he thinks. I don't agree with everything that he says. Of course not. And there's nobody that I agree with 100% of what they say. But the point I'm pushing here is that there is so much frustration over what other people believe. We are so much more concerned with how other people think than we should be. Now, sometimes this is important because if what other people think is actually doing physical harm to other people, that's a different story. In other words, my opinion on the war or fighting overseas, it just goes unnoticed like everyone else's. Whatever's going to happen happens because they do what they do 
and we don't have any say on it. But uh, I also don't understand the inner complexities of why this particular conflict is happening, and all we have to go by is incomplete information. But because of the fact that we are lacking in information so much, <laughs> we have decided that rather than finding truth, we would rather look for faults in others' ideas. And the more we dig in, the harder it is for us to change our minds. Bad ideas multiply extremely rapidly. But, you know, to back up for a moment, like Ben Shapiro, for example, people look up to him and consider him an informational, you know, truth-telling guy who understands the world. And he absolutely doesn't, in my opinion, but to each his own. But he did an entire video on Imagine by John Lennon. It was a speech he gave where he actually played the song. And he went along and kind of talked in the background like, oh God, yeah. Basically his thing, his shtick was, oh, look at this hippie John Lennon thinking that the world can all live as one. And that was his whole speech. His whole shtick was to make fun of the song while at the same time completely misunderstanding the lyrics. The same way that as I said, Jordan Peterson had tried to quote 1984 and completely misunderstood the book. Or perhaps it wasn't Jordan Peterson, sorry. Uh, it may have been Dave Rubin, who was another one of these guys. But, uh, you know, I've had people recommend that I listen to guys like Dave Rubin, and I'm saying, you know, I kindly opt out. He is a moron, in my opinion. And that makes me step back and say, why have so many people seen such value in this person or that person when I just see garbage coming out of their mouth? So just like with the, the groups, what you call the IDW and where this fits into my discussion, it was uh, Sam Harris who didn't want to be part of that group, who didn't agree with being labeled as a group. And it reminds me of the old Groucho Marx route, which he said I would not want to be I would, don't want to join any group that would have me as a member. And uh, it's a quote I always remember. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it goes. But basically that uh, when you join a group, that group is going to become biased and anti-other groups. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a complicated discussion that has another point on, of its own. But, <clears throat> you know, the guy like, for example, Dave Rubin, like I was saying, he... He's just a whiny complainer who really has no substance. And he wrote a book, and I don't know much about the guy. I just remember seeing an interview where he had written a book, and uh, he, I guess he got upset. Nobody was reading his book, and, you know, he's like, you've got to have substance. So many people are writing books, and they're just, from, from the reviews, just garbage. Just nothing different from what they've already given in their same rants and raves online. You know, the Tucker Carlson's of the world or, you know, any of these people who, you know, the guys, the Dave Rubens, <laughs> you know, the Shapiros, they're nothing like Sam Harris. Sam Harris is actually an amazing character. I read his book or the audio version. It was uh, Letters to a Christian Nation about 10 years ago when I was working on the job site and I'd listen to it each day and I thought, wow, this guy's a little bit cocky, but he does have good points. And over the years, and here's where I bring, you know, this full circle, he changed his mind on a lot of things. In fact, he's has his own, I believe, meditation app, and he's written about, you know, some of the Eastern mysticism and, and, and Buddhism because I, he began to see the value. He studied religion and looked at it enough and was probably as curious as I am to think, well, why are people happy and why does this work? And he wants to share the things he's learned. But because of some of the things he's changed his mind on, we have a term for this, right? Flip-floppers. I remember when one of the politicians in Florida years back, he was interviewed and asked why he changed his mind on legal on legalizing pot because, you know, he'd always been a staunch, you know, he, he hated cannabis and he wanted it banned forever. And he, he was interviewed and he plainly said, well, at the time, I didn't have the proper information to derive a conclusion that was accurate. So, once I was given that information, I changed my mind. And he was ridiculed by his, you know, his fellow politicians for changing his mind. 
I think this is something that should be celebrated. If we're not willing to look at all the sides and and uh, and and look at all the angles, then we end up <laughs> believing that Prager University is an actual university. Um, Prager U is an online garbage course that they val they think values are more important than anything. It's like a, a replacement for love, but it's only if it's their values. And this is where it's important to not believe and don't buy into other people's bullshit when they're trying to tell you how to live your life. This idea that we need someone to tell us our values. The syndrome would be similar to those people who say, well, if you don't have God, then we'd all just run around and murder each other. My thought was, like, is that where your mind goes? Is that what you think people would do? Because I have no desire to harm anyone else. I believe nature has instilled us with a little bit of reason on that one, but uh, it's easy to look at the world as big and scary, but <sighs> metanoia, changing your mind. Everyone wants to be changing their mind on things, but nobody ever really does. They just start believing someone else. We often ignore the bigger picture. We have the cringy, persecuted minority complex. The way people always assume they're being attacked and, you know, their life is so difficult because their group is being ridiculed. This, for example, there's been a Christian perse persecution complex over the years. I've listened to a lot of these pastors and evangelists. They talk about how the religion is under threat and, you know, they're doomed and everybody's going by Satan and, uh, by the way, make sure you donate to the collection plate. Don't forget your tithe and uh, your 10% for life to the church if you're a Mormon. But people are dedicated. I mean, I'm more likely to get a Mormon to change their mind than them to get me to change my mind, but who knows? In fact, on that note, Portland had the hottest temperatures we had ever had a couple weeks ago in that heat wave. It was 115 degrees. Lo and behold, at 5 o'clock p.m., two Mormon girls show up at my door. I couldn't believe it. That is dedication. <laughs> then again, they were probably from a hotter climate than I am. Unfortunately, uh, my house was hotter than outside, so I didn't really have any way to invite them in. But uh, I invite the Mormons in and I talk to them whenever they come because I want to hear other people's viewpoints. I like a good discussion. I like to learn. I'm not afraid of being swayed or changing my mind. If somebody gives me a good enough reason to believe something, then I will. And I agree with even many of the people I labeled. I agree with some of the claims they make. Even if they're far right and they're complaining about the liberal left, sure, I agree. There's some crazy shit going on out there. There's some real morons on both sides of the fence. You know, religious and non-religious, political and non-political. It doesn't matter. Humans are humans. We congregate in these groups and we go huff, 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 and we complain about someone else. Instead of asking ourselves why they think what they think. There's a lot of systemic issues out there that cause us not to be able to get our, quote, house in order. And people often lose hope over that. Not to mention, you know, it. for example, a person who, let's just say they've complained about healthcare. They've complained about cheap healthcare their whole life. Oh, I shouldn't have to pay for other people's healthcare through my tax dollars. And then one day they lose their job. And then the next week they fall and break both their legs. All of a sudden they have no insurance. What do they do? They go get help. It's a safety net. People can change their mind very quickly. It's the same way as complaining about bailouts or government programs. And then all of a sudden a tornado whips through your town or a hurricane. And guess who you're looking to for money? You know, it's like the entire state of Texas looking for a government bailout after the cold snap, but they wanted to be disconnected from the grid. My point of this is working as a cohesive social group is important. We can have differences of opinion, yes, but spending all our time poking at each other does nothing to solve the problem. I feel like there are no issues really being talked about. 
we need insurance, which means we need society to work together. And no, I'm not talking about buying insurance from a company. I'm talking about the insurance that if there is a storm, an earthquake, a disaster, a pandemic, you will help your neighbors regardless of the cause. We need each other. We really do. So often when people are trying to get others and posing as someone who wants to get others to change their mind, it's really not about the subject at all. It's about the surety that they are posing their opinions as facts and not wanting to listen to the other side. There's never a desire to listen. Instead of a civil discussion where two people debate something, they're there just there to yell at each other and make fun of each other. We live in very absurd times. We're living in a reality television illusion, <laughs> even in our real lives. There are people who don't like others because they take sides, and there are people who don't like others because they won't take sides. And if you don't take sides, you're just a referee, an observer, and that makes it difficult. <sighs> Everything's a fad. It all comes and goes, but in today's world, it's coming and going a lot faster than it ever has before. I'm 45 now. I've learned how to sense bullshit, but it's taken me a long time to realize how full of shit I have been and have been in my life. How I wanted to believe that things perhaps were simple. I've always known things were complicated, but I've realized through my life time and again that, you know, there's more to a story than one side, always, especially if it's a complicated issue, because there's a reason why people have opposing beliefs and ideas on certain things and it's up to us as humans as adults to investigate these possibilities and to try to understand each other so we can understand ourselves so find a way to use metanoia in your life <laughs> in other words to repent merely means to change your mind which is very simple to do, if you're willing to be honest with yourself. But only we as individuals know what that might be. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. I will put a list in the end here. And uh, thanks for making this podcast work. Thanks for making my channel great. And I appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Help stamp out quackery.